Hi, this is Kate with IT Retail. In this video, we're going to go over all the front end settings. So let's start. So if your screen doesn't look like this, then retail might not be open. So let's open retail market. So if your screen looks like this instead, you'll want to click this green icon down here. You can press the start button here. This should be pinned to the start menu, or you can scroll down and click retail next. So let's press that. It'll open up. And there's four buttons you'll be using. So there's sign in, sign out, training, clock in and clock out, and setup. So setup is for the IT retail text to configure lane. So uh, please don't go in that one. Market can be used to track employees hours. To clock in or out, enter the employee pin, then press either clock in or clock out. Let's try clocking in. We'll put our pin number in. Press clock in. The screen will display the employee's name and that they are now clocked in. When you clock out, the pin four. So I didn't work anything today, <laughs> but it'll show you if they did work, how many hours and how many minutes. And then press comment if you'd like to comment on that shift. So you can put it in here. Here is a comment. And press OK. And then press clock in or clock out. Next is training mode. The training button will let you practice on the lane without any of the transactions being sent to the back end. The level of access determined by the employee's role will determine if they can use training mode or not. To start training mode, click on training and enter your PIN number. It'll say training mode is on. And training mode is distinct by having a very bright blue background and your store name will not be visible on the screen. In training mode, practice any transaction you would like to get familiar with the system. All right, now let's learn about how the lane works. To sign in, enter your PIN number and press sign in. So enter your PIN and press sign in. There are a couple of different ways to ring up an item. The simplest is to take the item and scan it with either the hand or table scanner. If the cashier knows the UPC PLU number, they can enter it manually using the keypad and press enter. If items have been added in the product lookup, then click product lookup, go into the category, and then select the item you want to add. Lastly, an item can be searched for in product search. So press manager functions, then press product search. Here you can search for product by UPC or descriptions. Searches can also be narrowed down by departments. Click the item and it will be added to the transaction back here. Keep adding more items and when you're done, press exit. Once the cashier is done ringing up all items, it's time to complete the transaction. Press total and a list of available tenders will appear. The initial tender options that are available are cash, credit, debit, gift card, check, EBT cash, and EBT food. When cash is pressed, a window will appear asking for how much cash was given. It will have some predetermined amounts, or you can key in whatever amount was given. Press OK. So retail supports split transactions. So if the customer gives $10 or any other amount, the remaining balance can be paid with a different tender. If you have enabled store credit, then the option to use store credit to pay for the transaction can be used as well. I'll go over store credit next. For a customer to use store credit, 
they must be added to the transaction. This can happen at the very beginning, middle, or right before checkout. Let's add a customer to the transaction. Click Customers and type in their name to search. Once they have been located, click their name and press OK. You'll now see them at the top of the transaction. If they have a balance or if they receive a discount, that information will also be visible. Now let's add some items. He really likes raisin rolls. <laughs> when we're done, press total and look for the tender named in-store charge. On the tender line, once you're done, it will show that the amount has been added to his in-store charge. Now when we add Lewis again to the transaction, so let's add him back, his balance will be shown. So what we just charged him, $13.98, it'll now be shown on his customer balance. Now even though this is Lewis's store, his balance limit is only $15. So if he tries to buy another cinnamon roll with his in-store charge, it's going to be declined. So let's press total, next, in-store charge, in-store charge out of limit. So let's cancel this. And now let's show you how if someone wants to pay down their in-store charge. So again, Add the customer, press total, and this time choose pay on account or pay off balance. Enter the amount that the customer is paying on the account. So let's say he's going to pay off his balance, $13.98. Choose the tender and press OK. Now when we go back, his bounce will be paid off. Let's take a look at the functions under miscellaneous right here. So first we have repeat. This button will repeat any item rung up right before it. Reprint receipt prints the last receipt from the register. It only goes back to the last one and not any further. To use price check, press the price check button, then ring up an item. A window will appear with the item's name, price, and department. Press OK to add it to the transaction or cancel to decline. Manual weight allows you to manually enter the weight of an item and the price to be calculated and added to the transaction. So first enter the weight, so let's put a pound, then press manual weight, and then key in the UPC or scan the item. So for manual weight to work, the item must be flagged for scale. To use price override, press the price override button, then key in or scan the item. A window will appear asking to enter the new amount. This does not change the price for this item permanently. It is just for this one transaction. And the last button is clock in and clock out, which we've already covered. Retail also has the ability to suspend and resume transactions. In case a customer wants to get out of line, but you do not want to ring up everything again, you can choose to suspend the transaction. To suspend a transaction, press suspend resume And then to bring the transaction back, press it again with no other items being added to the transaction yet. A window will appear with boxes that contain the cashier who suspended the transaction, the time and date, and the total of the items that were rung up. Once you find the transaction, click it and press OK. Those suspended transactions can be resumed at any time 
as long as there are no other items on the transaction yet. Next is discounts. To apply a discount, press the discount button, then choose the discount to be used. These discounts are created in your backend. Depending on your settings, multiple discounts may be applied to a single transaction. Discounts are also dependent upon if the cashier's role has access to discounts. And scan. So to ring up items that either have no label or will not scan, you can use non-scan. If a department has been checked as non-scan in the backend, it will be available for use in non-scan. To do a non-scan, enter the amount, press non-scan, choose the department, and click OK. The amount will be added to the transaction. Next is quantity. To ring up multiples of one item, you can use the quantity button. Enter how many of the item the customer has, let's say they have five, press quantity, and then scan or key in the item. So we had five raisin rolls. Next is canceling transactions and voids. So in case you ring up too many of an item or the customer changes their mind, you can void items off of the transaction. Use the arrow keys here to navigate to the item and then press void to take it off. If everything needs to come off of the transaction, then press cancel transaction and all items will be cleared from the screen. This is refunds. To issue a refund, use the refund button located under refunds and voids. There are a couple of ways to issue a refund, but each way will always require you to first press the refund button. So first, press the refund button, and then scan or type in the UPC. You can also refund a, sp a specific amount using non-scan. So first press refund again, put in the amount, and then pick the department that the refund will be coming from. The last way to issue a refund is to use your product lookup. So press refund, go to product lookup, and find that product in there. We'll add it for a refund. You will know the item is being added as a refund because it will display in red, it'll have an R next to it, and your total will be negative. Once you're doing, once you're done adding items to be refunded, press total and then choose the tender to be refunded back. If the tender is credit, debit, or EBT, the customer will need to have their card available so the amount can be refunded back to it. The no sell button will ask for cashiers to input their PIN number and then open the drawer. And then switch user can be used to lock the register like this, and it can't be used again until someone enters their PIN number or to actually switch employees. The last is all the manager functions, which are located under the button manager functions. So first we have loan. Loan is used when a cashier needs change. Press loan and enter the amount that was added to the till. If the cashier changes a 20 for a roll of quarters, like an equal switch, loan in is not required. And you'll pick the tender that you're doing the loan in with. Pickup is used when a cashier has too much cash in their till and needs to do a safe drop. Press pickup and enter the amount that was removed from the till. For your lane, you'll have the type of tender. It's usually just cash or check. This amount will be deducted from their till and will not be counted when reconciling their cash at the end of the day. Add Edit Product allows you to add products or change certain attributes of a product. So if you're going to add a new product, it needs the UPC, a description of the name, which department it's going into, and a price. 
Any fields that are visible can also be changed or chosen for your product. When done, press OK. Add Customer allows you to add new customers. If you want to add a new customer to a transaction, but they are not yet in the system, you can do that here. You will need at least their first and last name. Once done adding their information, press OK. You can also use these options as well. Pay in and pay out will only be available if you had added those options in the back end. To do either a paid in or paid out, click and then choose which one. Pick your option, press OK, and then enter the amount. Again, press OK. So once this is done, this amount will be added to the cashier's till or subtracted. Synchronize is used to get information from the cloud back end to your lane. If a lot of changes have been made to products, then choose Sync Products. If general settings have been changed or new employees added, then select Get Updates from Server. Market will update on its own, but if you're not seeing changes made or new products that have been added, then try synchronization. Vendor Payment is used for your records. If you pay cash from the till to pay a vendor, you should most likely use paid out instead so the till balance will be correct. When it's time to close up shop, press close store. And we can't have this on the transaction, so we'll cancel it out. And let's go back. So when you're done with the day, it's time to close up shop, press close store. The cashier can enter the amount of cash they have in their till if they don't want them to use the back end. You can enter the total amount here. Or you can count each bill. Once done, press OK. If you prefer them to bounce their till on the back end, then just have them press sync and sign off. And it'll close out the lane. If your store has electronic gift cards, Gift Manager is where you can activate, view balances, or add more money to them. To activate a card, press Activate and enter the amount to be added to the card. The system will ask to swipe the gift card on the pin pad. Once that is done, we'll add the amount to the transaction and then you will press Total and then choose the payment method that they use to pay for the gift card. It's the same thing for the card reload. You press card reload, enter the amount that they're going to put on there. They'll swipe the card again, and then it will be added to the transaction and then total to pay for it. If they want to know how much is left on their card, you'd press balance inquiry. They'd swipe the, pin, swipe the card on the pin pad, and then a receipt will print out showing their remaining balance. So EBT Food and EBT Cash Balance will show the remaining benefits left on either one. So when you press EBT Cash or EBT Balance, the customer will swipe their card and then input their PIN on the PIN pad and a receipt will print out with their remaining benefits. Well, that's it for front end training. And as always, if you have any questions, please email, call or chat with us online.